so welcome to another live match. It's a bit of a rarity for me. I'm actually fishing midweek. Um, so I've gone to Owl Church. We're fishing Orshoe Lake, which is one of my favourite lakes. Um, unfortunately, I've drawn Peg 9, which to be honest with you is not the best. For people who know it, you just set back a little bit. And also, what well, you can see, like, if you look at the guy on Peg 11, he's like further out in the lake than what I am. Um, and it's just really, really, really shallow. But don't get me wrong, it can throw up. And the good thing about um, Horseshoe Lake is there's so many get out of jail fish, so you might not necessarily be able to win the match, but you're always in the hunt, you know. If you, even if you ain't caught hardly anything, you're, you're, um, if you've got like an hour and a half left and you can catch some big fish, then uh, you can put it back. So I'm going to fish paste just for a change. So seafood at Spandamix. Tried and tested, um, so I'm using that, and then obviously fishery pellets. Be a little bit careful with the bait allowance, you're only allowed two kilos, so you've got to be a little bit mindful on how you feed and what pellet size pellets you take and stuff. So I've opted for two mils and four mils. So I've started short, as you can see, a top kit plus one. Fishing 020 straight through to a size 12 hook. So no messing around. This is speeded up, as you can tell. Um, look, always look around and see what, what's going on. I haven't fed no other bait anywhere else apart from um, some bait to my right hand edge. Hopefully, maybe they'll they show themselves because it's quite shallow. But I didn't catch anything there until later on. So it's about maybe eight eight minutes in, and I've when I just beginning to think about fishing either longer on pace or um, what do you call it, chucking a feeder. I have actually set up a, a, a hybrid feeder, which has got to be in line, no elasticated feeders, and not fixed neither. Um, the fish do show themselves here because it's so shallow and it's quite silty. So therefore, you sort of know when there's a fish around. Um, so I had a few like blows, short, um, a bit of disturbance in the peg. So therefore, I had a feeling I was going to get a bite, which I did. So happy days. So I got 2.5 mil hybrid elastic through my MIDI um, kit. So fair play, they're pretty decent. Fish fight unbelievably hard here, so don't please don't. If you ever fish this lake or you know this lake, then you know not to fish light so heavily coloured. Oh, I think you'd be daft to fish anything less than 018 when it's this time of year. Just take my time. So, not a bad stamp, probably about probably six ish pound fish are deceiving here they weigh so much heavier than what, what you actually um, give credit for so be careful not to go over the weight limits it might have even been seven pounds to be honest so the weight limit is 65 pound on this lake max ideally only put 60 so you've got like a five pound leeway if you go over you're going to be in trouble you're going to get knocked back if you go over 80 then unfortunately you're going to lose a net We've got an 11's catching a few. So unfortunately no more bite short or even indications so no blows. There's been probably probably fish short too, um, what do you call it, too long to be honest. But I didn't want to want to feed bait anywhere else, I just wanted to hopefully if I was going to do a decent weight or potentially you know going to win the match I felt I'm going to catch short and down the edges, that's why I really wanted the fish. Especially with a bit of ripple I thought maybe if I was patient and then maybe they might come short but 
so I fed some bait at 11 meters and it shallows up the actual deepest part of the lake is actually on the top here plus one so the further you go out now it does actually get shallower so just for the record I'm not fishing bait shallow it is actually on the depth so it's, it's not very deep at all it's probably only about 18 inches deep at, at 14 and a half meters so it's, it is very shallow bag we can see there look so it's actually on the deck so as I sort of predicted and it panned out the same way was basically you had a big pot pretty much after every fish because it's so shallow as soon as you hit one it just erupted with with fish as you can see I just just spooked one just a second ago and this, this is the problem so as soon as you hit one you could see fish like bolting off different directions and stuff and being so shallow I think it just and quite silly I think the fish just wafted the bait all over the place so I'm not saying like you got a big pot as in like loads and loads of bait after every every fish but you definitely wanted to put some micras, bit of corn and a few full meals that's how I fed it so I probably fed about a third of a big pot and I tried to be clever and you could, again you got to be mindful of bait restrictions so I try to feed it to the right as well so I was planning to like basically big part let it rest go to a, like a 45 degree angle fish that swim catch fish off there big pot it and then rotate back to the next one but that didn't really pan out to be honest with you um, it didn't, didn't work I only caught probably about four fish in the first two hours so I did struggle a little bit to be honest mindful kept on looking down the edge as in physically looking not with a rig because they've got big size fish you know that they would show themselves so you'd see like vortex in the water or disturbance or something the left hand edge I fed yet so I don't plan to feed that until later the left hand edge to peg 10 is a lot deeper than what the uh, right hand edge is to peg 8 quite lucky because there's a tree on 10 and there's a tree on 8 so neither angler either side of me can really share the platform so you've got it to yourself so that's one benefit so I was just patient just waited I was chatting to Neil saying that you know it could be a match where you catch maybe see that fish like spooking everywhere that um, you know you catch maybe 30 pound 40 pound in the first four four and a half hours and then hopefully catch load of fish late had a really good run the last sort of hour <coughs> caught um, down the edges so we got me out of trouble the last 26 minutes so I put another net in I had um, 43 pound I had two barbel in my silvers net which probably would have gone maybe four pounds so I had 39 pound in the last 26 minutes gent too bad going not like some of the reports where um, last 40 minutes somehow they catch 150 pound or 200 pound I'm not sure how anyone would do that on this lake But it's really important. It's just one like a soft, powerful elastic. So it's got a 2.2 on this one. It's a bit softer as I go on further out. Still again 020 on size 12 up. Almost had him. You don't want to pull too hard, they're just going to pull out of them. So I had an enjoyable match. Um, like I say, it did come good in the last hour and a half. Um, so I got myself back into a frame place. Um, so a lot of people caught late as well. So it wasn't like just me that caught late. Obviously a lot of people caught really well late. Um, Steve Ballion won the match. 
with 177 pounds, a fair play to him on peg 13. Um, wow, what an angler to be honest, he's on fire at the moment. And then Neil McKinnon was second on peg 28 um, with 145 pounds. He's caught on pellets against the bank, just pinging six mils. I'm fishing six mils, then he's caught a few fish down his edge on a top kit later on. I uh, forgot to mention Steve Bellion's caught on pace. He's had a few slapping to begin with against the flower pot. And then he's come about roughly about 10 metres with pace. And then also he's caught down his edge on pace as well. So fair play to him. And obviously I've caught on pace. And then I believe Ian was fourth with 115 pound. So there's all the weights. So you can just pause it now if you want to and have a look. And then it's part of my cat shot. So cheers Steve for taking a photo. And I'll catch you all soon. Take care. Bye.